For years, I've heard a lot of complaining from African-American comic fans about the lack of diversity and the lack of black superheroes at the two, big two comic publishers, Marvel and DC, and even to an extent, some independent publishers. And what is really, you know, the big problem with African-Americans is that they continue to wait for, you know, these big two comic publishers, Marvel and DC, and even to an extent, Dark Horse, Image, or somebody else, to start creating African-American characters um, for them. And this is a big mistake. Uh, I personally believe that it's our job to create our own heroes and to tell our own stories and adventures um, in the superhero medium or the comic book genre. Um, as a writer, as a kid, this is one of the things that inspired me to become a comic book writer, and it inspires me to this day to become, you know, a African American fantasy writer and novelist. And I always believe that the best person to tell a story about the black experience is a black person and because we understand our culture we understand our experiences and we can tell a story about a black character better than the 95 percent of white males currently in the comic book industry right now who create black characters now a lot of us the big problem is we look at characters black characters and we still see them sadly through a white lens um and this is a prime example of cognitive distortion because i run into this all the time when I present ISIS series books to readers and you know people are still expecting you know the characters to be as, to meet some sort of, of standard to be just um like the white characters and they don't understand that yes I still follow the same paradigms and the same story models as a comic book but I'm not going to tell you know stories that are the same way because our experience and our culture is completely different and that culture and experience needs to be reflected in the stories we tell and this is the big problem is is and, and when it comes to you know black superheroes is that we keep wanting you know other people to tell our stories and it's just not going to happen I mean I remember back in the 90s I was very proud to see the milestone line you know make its um, produce comics for readers and you know I bought almost every one of them when I was in college I bought almost every one of them and I made an effort to support them and it was one of the again like I was I was still a young guy and I still it was one of those things that continued to inspire me to you know want to write comics and you know eventually led to me getting into the african-american fantasy genre because I really wanted to tell those type of stories from the black experience and talk about things as they related to black culture. Um, this is something I do in almost all of my books from The Temptation of John Haynes to the Isis series, even to the East Team series. I make every effort to, you know, infuse that black culture and that black history in every one of my fantasy stories and you really don't really see that when it comes to black comic book characters, when, when, especially ones from the big two. Usually they're just there and I've, I've got a lot of the comics in my home right now I mean these characters are fine characters but they're never given really a prominent role because they were never designed to have a prominent role they were never designed to be main characters I can give people you know examples like when I look at the Jim Rhodes character in Iron Man um, he was never designed to be a prominent character and every every time you know publishers Marvel tries to branch him out into his own, into his own, he, it, the book always fails because, you know, War Machine, Iron Patriot, they just never takes off because he was never designed to be a main character. When it, there's a, but people don't understand, because I'm a crafts, I think I'm a craftsman, but when you design a main character, they have a lot more depth and dimension than your supporting character, and a main character is somebody who can carry a story and the story comes around them. Whereas a supporting character, you know, they're kind of strong, but they really can't, they can carry a story for a while, but they can't carry a series. They're not strong enough to carry a series. And this is the problem with a lot of black characters who come from, you know, the big two or from non-black creators. They're not really designed to be main characters. They're not designed to carry, carry the series or carry the story. They don't have enough backstory. They don't have enough history. 
and there's not enough there to engage the um, reader, and that's one of the, the big reasons we can't expect um, other people to tell our stories because um, you know they don't know there are stories. I mean, when I look at the comic book industry, it's still 95% white, still 95% male, and they're not qualified to create black characters for a black audience or even an audience across the globe. And every time you're going to get, all you're going to get is a character who's usually just fit for an ancillary role or a supporting role. And this is one of the big problems that black people need to understand is that you can't expect them to produce something that you're supposed to produce. Um, as a publisher of the SJS Direct Imprint, I make a hard effort, you know, to create fantasy characters from the African American experience and based in African American culture and, you know, are rooted in our stories and our experience. And I always believed ever since I was a little kid, you know, the only person who's going to make a black character is a black person. And the only person who should be making black characters is a black creator because we're the only ones who understand our stories. We're the only ones who understand our experiences. And we're the only ones who can really tell our stories, you know, in an effective way. And, you know, get the reader to understand what it is that's different and what is unique about being black and, you know, about what's, what would be unique about being a black superhero. And that's, that's our job. And I was, again, I've listened to, you know, different discussions. I watched Chris Miller's video when he talked about something for superheroes. And he was right. The only person who can make our own heroes is us. Same thing when I was in the Black Authority Facebook group and I was reading a line, he said the same thing. Um, that, you know, you shouldn't be sitting here waiting for somebody else to make your own characters. You need to be making your own characters. Um, and this is something I do every day with the SJS Direct Imprint. I make my own characters, I tell my own, st I tell our stories, and I try to make our experience relatable to readers all over the world so they understand, you know, what, the, what a black superhero is about. And that, that means a lot to me because when readers all over the world of all ages read these kind of stories, it gives them a perspective and an insight into what the black experience would be like when it regards to, you know, fantasy characters and superheroes. Because we don't get to be seen that often. And you know, whenever in shows, you know, like the cartoons like Justice League or, you know, Batman or anything like that, where it's often in an ancillary role. But when we're in our own stories, we are the main characters, and we tell our own stories. And, again, that's something we need to do, because you can't wait for somebody else to make your own characters and, you know, tell, what, tell your story. You can't wait for that to happen, because it's never going to happen. Again, comic book industry is 95% white, 95% male, and, again, they're just not qualified to produce characters of color. I mean, and when they do create characters of color, they're not really interested in supporting them because that's not a big part of their business. Again, like DC Comics, their big business is promoting, you know, white characters like Superman and Batman to the forefront. And whenever you see a black character start to get popular, like say you're Mr. Terrific, he usually gets buried. Or you see a character like your cyborg, he gets buried. He, I mean, they talked about, you know, diversity with the so-called New 52, I can't stand that thing. And, you know, he's literally like the butler, um, working the transporter. He's not really featured in his own stories because, again, he was never designed to be a main character. He has no arch enemies. He has no history. I mean, he has a history, but it's not that big of a history compared to, you know, other characters. He has no rogues gallery. These are all things that a main character has. This is this is what Isis has, and this is what John Haynes has, and this is what East Team has. They have, they have rose galleries. They have histories. They have arch enemies. They have all of the story elements that a main character, like your Spider-Man or your Batman or your Superman, has. They all have the psychological um, um, chemistry between them and a bad guy. They all have that rivalry, and these are things that you know. If the character is not a main character, that this is not going to get built up, because um, I've seen it in many comics. I've read hundreds of comics. I mean, maybe thousand, maybe because I have about three thousand comics in my collection. I've read all these types of stories, and 
this is a big problem with black characters is that they don't have these elements and this is why you know you can't expect a company again like Marvel or DC to or even Dark Horse or Image to give you this type of character because that type of work they're not going to put that type of work into that kind of character um, and give them these these story elements and you know this catalog of, of things I mean when you look at a character like your Black Panther, your Luke Cage their rogues gallery is extremely limited and you know their history is extremely limited they don't have that much of a feud there's not much of a build to their stories and you know it's just not going to be there what's going to be there is you know basic the fights are pretty basic it's the same thing with superhero women because i've seen this also with superhero women you know not much of a rogues gallery not much chemistry not much of a feud not much of a build they're just kind of there and the only way in case you're going to get, you know, that type of storytelling again is with a black publisher and a black writer like myself. Um, we're going to take the time to build those story elements and try to build that type of history, you know, build the type of feud. Like what I tried to do, for example, you know, in the two stories, Isis, the beauty myth and Isis, Wrath of the Cyber Goddess, I built, you know, this feud and this rivalry between... Isis and her villain, you know, the cyber goddess, eventually, I mean, she started out as Rahima Sanders, this um, cosmetics owner, and then she evolved into the cyber goddess villain, and that's the type of, and, and over the time, over the two books, what happens is they built this kind of feud and, his, and um, history, you know, and they had this intense rivalry, and you don't really get to see that that often, I mean, she became like, she became one of her major arch enemies. Same thing with Isis in the Ultimate Fight when she takes on, you know, the Greek goddess Nemesis. They have a nice little feud um, between two books, between you know Ultimate Fight and Power of the Princess. And then Isis also has a nice, you know, intense arch. She has an arch enemy in um, Amari and Amari's Revenge. Same thing, you know, you have that 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 rogues gallery building up very nicely and that's what I'm trying to do you know with the Isis series where I was building up the arch enemies and the rogues galleries because I didn't see that even in the milestone comics the milestone with characters like Static you know Icon, Hardware they had they had a lot of great heroes in that line but what really I think prevented them from really growing was the limitations on the villain side you really have to what I learned is that you know the heel or the bad guy is just as important as the good guy and when you're building a character um, like a fantasy character or a comic book character the rogues are extremely important for example like with the Flash and Spider-Man and Batman the reason why those characters are so popular is because they have this great rogues gallery that you know can that anybody can remember and they remember them because of the numerous cool things that they have done in there are battles with the bad guy, and we don't really get to see that with black characters. I mean, yes, he's a hero, but what type of challenges do they overcome? And that's something I really take a lot of time to think about. You know, even in books like The Temptation of John Haynes, I thought about that, you know, John Haynes versus the devil, and the devil controlling corporate America. This guy, you know, needing a job, and what would he do? Would he be compromised? This was stuff, you know. I thought about, it, and then we had this nice Lucifer John, Lucifer versus John Haynes rivalry, and this John Haynes Easting rivalry, you know, love hate relationship, and it built over the story. We really don't get to see that, you know, in black comics or even black fantasy fiction. I mean, I read a lot of black fantasy fiction, and I try to build these type of stories out, and I try to, you know, develop characters and give them that character development, that growth, and that direction. Because again, that's that's a big problem I saw, you know, with a lot of black comics, was a lot of character development wasn't really that strong. I mean, I saw some of it in Milestone, but when it comes down to, you know, your Marvel or your DC characters, there's not a lot of growth. Um, characters are just, again, they're ancillary, they're just kind of there. They're black, but they're not, char they're, they're characters that are black. Um, uh, I'm getting confused here. They're black characters, not characters that are black. And there's a big difference between the two. I mean, a black character is just a character who is of a certain ethnicity. Um, a character that is black is a character first, and we see the multi their multidimensionality and their depth first, and then their ethnicity is, you know, it's second. I mean, they're, they're again, they're they're black, but we don't see 
them being black for us. We see them as people, we relate to them, we identify with them, we see their experiences in between the pages of a comic, we relate to them. I mean, we kind of saw that with Cyborg back in the day when Marv Wolfman was writing him. And that's what really, what we really want to, what people want to see. But what I see from, you know, black people, they're still expecting companies to do this, but it's not going to happen all the time, especially from mainstream publishers. What's going to happen? The only way you're going to get that type of story really is from a publisher like myself and my SJS Direct Imprint or other independent, you know, publishers. Because the black writers, again, we've done the research um, on black history. We understand the black experience. We want to tell stories about black characters. And we want to tell the best stories about black characters. Because for us, this is just not about diversity, you know, quote-unquote diversity, where we just make a few token characters this is about us presenting our stories to the world and the big problem with us black publishers is that getting the mark getting the readers to um support us because you know a lot of times when it comes down to african-american publications african-americans are more weary of african-american publications um i've seen this with the isis series you know when it comes down to you know, African American superheroes like ISIS, you know, they go, that's not the real ISIS. And I'm sitting there going, you know what? Marvel Comics doesn't produce the real Thor or the real Hercules or the real Ares, but you continue to buy these comics. Well, and then on top of it, you complain about the lack of diversity, which is, you know, quite troubling. I mean, in order for you to get the, to these type of characters, you have to support them. And the only people, again, who are going to produce them are black publishers. And they're the only ones who are going to tell the stories in a way that, you know, a lot of times doesn't seem stereotypical. Like, I mean, I, I a lot of people, they complain about, you know, how the characters like Luke Cage are kind of stereotypical. Well, when I create characters, they're not very stereotypical. Um, they're very humanized. They're very complex. They're very multidimensional. And... All I'm looking for, you know, really, is for people to try to support the kind of characters I design. Um, and I make every effort to push them. I mean, whenever I... Again, that's another big problem with African-American characters in it, when it comes to comics from mainstream publishers. They don't really get that big push. I mean, again, for example, I look at the Michael Hope Mr. Terrific and how he was handled. Um, as minute he started getting popular, DC Comics kind of buried him. Um, didn't give him a book. Again, again, he was underdeveloped because he had no rogues gallery. He was a great black character, but again, underdeveloped because he had no rogues gallery. He had a great history because they, they did do a great transition. Jeff Johns did do a great transition between him and the original Mr. Terrific. But again, they didn't really build on that later on and build him a feud, a rogues gallery, and stuff like that. Same thing when Static started getting popular. Um, DC Comics, again, you know, when it came down to licensing and merchandising, they really didn't push him um i mean this was the number one show in t in kid in households and was very popular you know across the board and there was never an action figure and then on top of it you know the dvd box set was never released i look at it you know i watched static team up with superman green lantern the justice league batman batman beyond all those episodes i have to watch them on vhs because you know Warner Brothers never released a DVD box set. And I have bought all the, the, you know, Bruce Timm, Paul Dini, Justice League, Batman Animated Series, Superman the Animated Series, Batman Beyond, Justice League, Justice League Unlimited. I bought all of those, and I really wanted to add the Static Shock to my collection, but because Warner Brothers never released it, I can't buy it. Um, I hear all these statements, you know, they say, oh, black characters won't sell. But I do believe black characters will sell because I see it with ISIS. I see, you know, if you write good characters, people across the world, all over the world, will buy them. And I have pretty much proven it, you know, with the ISIS series. Um, I've had, again, books sell in Italy, Germany, um, Canada, Japan, Australia. The ISIS series sells, you know, all across the world. People want these type of stories with African-American characters in them. It's just a matter of somebody producing them, and I believe it's going to have to be a black publisher that does that and show that there's a market for them. 
And the big problem with black people is they're still waiting for somebody else to do it when we have to get up and do it ourselves. And this is something I've been doing, you know, since the 90s. I've been at this because I see, I see a need for it. I see a market for it. You know, I, whenever I look at television, I see all these shows on CW. I, want, I sit there and wonder, why isn't there a black um, fantasy show on the air? And that's what makes me get cracking to the keyboard to write stories because I stay like this. I can't wait for somebody else to tell my story. I have to go out and tell it myself. And you can't, I look at, you know, the black community, they're still waiting for somebody to make a black, like this. they got all excited over this Black Panther movie. And, you know, I looked at it, I said, why are you getting excited over this? You're not going to make any money on it, and they're not going to try to hire anybody black. Whereas, you know, a guy like me, I'm going to try, if I can find somebody qualified, to hire somebody black and make sure that the production crew is black and make sure everybody else working on the production is black. So, if we can find qualified black people, because I know when I was doing Cyber Guy Discovery, it was hard for me to find anybody black qualified. So, um... But if I can, I will. I try to forward that money to another black person. I, again, I truly believe in group economics, and I believe in you know giving black people a shot. Um, but again, it's it's something we have to do. We don't do it, but we expect other people to do it. And then cognitive distortion kicks in whenever we do produce it, and we don't want to acknowledge you know a black creation created by a black person. We always want to acknowledge you know. A black creation, a black character created by a white person, and that really holds you holds back, you know, our pro, hold, holds us back as a people because when we start acknowledging our own creations, it says that we value ourselves, and it's a powerful statement saying, you know, you when you see a creation made by another black person, you're saying that I have value, I have worth, because by acknowledging that person's creation, you're saying that you matter as well. Um, it it says a lot about your self worth and your self-esteem, you know, as a black person, because you are saying that, you know, something created by another black person has value, and then that says that you have value as well. But when you say that, you know, a creation by a white, a black creation by a white person and a white person's interpretation of a black experience has more value, you're basically saying that your life only matters as it relates to white people. And that says a lot about self-image. This is, again, why I work so hard to create, you know, black characters like Isis and John Haynes and Easton, and, you know, I really push them as hard as I possibly can because I want to give, I want black people to look at themselves and see worth and see value and see intelligence and creativity. And I believe if you're a kid and you start reading this type of media, it's going to have a positive effect on you and a positive effect on how you see things because when you see yourself this w in a different light, you know, it makes you aspire to do things that are different, aspire to, to pursue different careers, inspire, you know, to, to do better in school and to try to do different things and, you know, come out of the so-called black stereotype box. And that's one of the reasons why I'm so passionate about African-American fantasy fiction and writing African American fantasy fiction, I make, I mean, when I get on Facebook or, you know, Twitter, I make every effort to promote those books as hard as I possibly can because I really want to expand this audience. I really want to see, you know, more people getting into it because, again, when we open your imagination, it allows, you start seeing the world differently and you start seeing yourself in that world and you start seeing yourself as a part of that world. I know I've said that in several videos. But it is true. You start seeing yourself as a part of a different world, not just inner city or just the neighborhood or just, you know, things. You start seeing yourself as a part of a larger world and start seeing yourself um, among different peoples and having different experiences. And it really helps you grow. And that's one of the reasons why I really push it so hard. Um, but again, I, as a creator, I sit there and I try to make these different stories and for me it's very something I love to do and something I enjoy doing and I really just want to share it with readers and I always look at it superheroes this way we're the, we're the best creators of our own characters because we understand our experiences we understand our stories and we can give people that clear and balanced picture 
of black life that no one else can possibly give. And that's one of the things I try to do in all of, the work, all of my work on the SJS Direct Imprint. Now, you can buy any of my books, such as the ISIS series, No Fantasy series, um, The Temptation of John Haynes. You can buy all, all of those great fantasy books on Amazon.com. There's a link in the description box. You can just head over there. You can buy it in paperback or Kindle. Uh, or you can just head over, well, most, uh, or you can borrow those same books. Um, because quite a few of them, like Temptation of John Haynes and several of the ISIS series, books like ISIS, Wrath of the Cyber Goddess, are on Kindle Unlimited. You can just go and borrow them if you don't have the money to pay for them. You have Amazon Prime, you can just go and borrow them. And I think you can get a 30-day free trial, so you can still go and borrow books that way. And, you know, just get into African-American fantasy fiction, you know, and start looking at the work of other of black creators because black creators, you know, they can tailor make this stuff for African Americans. And you know, you can't sit there and wait for Marvel and DC to create characters for you. The best thing for us to do is to support the creators who are making them for us, and then go out and make our own characters. Um, that's that's something that I really believe everybody needs to do. You can't again, you can't wait for somebody else to do it. We have to do it for ourselves. And we have to support the creators who are like myself who are out here doing out here doing this. Um, that's all I have to say for this video. You can comment, rate, and subscribe.